Luis Gonzalez debut. I just ate a big bowl of pasta, so I'm going to try and get through this without puking everywhere. So yeah, he is making the debut in this game. I made a video yesterday just talking about his stats and stuff. And I wanted to play that game, or just the debut game with him yesterday, but I wasn't able to because a bunch of shit was going on. So I wasn't able to play a couple of games last night. So yeah, this is a bit later than I was kind of hoping that this video would be uploaded, but... Nonetheless, it is, it's uploaded, it's all good, Luis Gonzalez has some nasty hitting stats, if you haven't seen, if you didn't see the last video, uh, this is just a quick look at his stats again, destroys righties and lefties, so he's not just one of those lefties who does good against righties, he does very well against lefties too, and his vision is alright too, I mean the fielding is the only thing wrong with this Luis Gonzalez, so left field is the position you want to put him at, if you do put him in your lineup, he's batting third in this game, and right there you saw Granderson leading off for my squad, and I think he had Granderson too, but I put Lorenzo Cain in because he did have a lefty on the mound, which I wasn't really hoping for Gonzalez's uh, debut game because, yeah, I was hoping to face a righty, even though he does have very good hitting stats versus lefties, uh, I was just hoping I could face a righty, but still, I've been doing much better with the lefty on lefty matchups lately, so Luis Gonzalez, first at bat. This is going to be just a showcase game of Luis Gonzalez, even though I'm going to be showing a bunch of other stuff. I'm going to be showing Luis Gonzalez the most in this game, obviously. So, yeah, first at bat, I mean, I don't know. Like, usually lefty on lefty, what do you get? Sliders down and away, fastballs on the inside part of the plate. So, usually waiting for something like that. Uh, he got me, he had me in the palm of his hand a little bit. I was down 0-2 in this count, trying to sneak in a high fastball right there, fouling it off. Very late swing. I was kind of lucky. That's that's how you know when you're playing with somebody with good hitting stats is when you have a very late swing and you're still able to uh, foul it off. But right, I don't even, why the hell is that even in this game? Why do you even challenge for the third base umpire, the first base umpire? When did you ever see a challenge where the the swing actually went went around? I don't think I've yet to see a swing in this game where they challenge down to third base or first base where they actually counted as a swing. So I'm just wondering why that is even in the game because it seems like at this point, whenever it is, at, like, yeah, whenever you do challenge it to the third base umpire or first base umpire, it's never a swing. So it's almost, it's obvious for me. So every single time that happens, I'm just like, okay, it wasn't a swing as soon as they're looking down to the zebra at either third base or first base. But Gonzalez's first at bat was just a pretty deep drive to left field, was caught. The ball physics, man, the ball physics in this game is crazy. Sometimes you'll see the, the ball will be going in left center, and then it'll curve all the way almost to the, the left field line or something. So, yeah, that's pretty, it can be very annoying at times, but it can also bail you out a couple times too. Like, sometimes like that when it's a hit to the gap most likely, and it'll look like somebody's going to catch up to the ball, it will kind of tail away from them. But then sometimes right there, it seems like the ball tails right to them. But, yeah, it is... It is more realistic and stuff. I mean, that's, prob that's probably the reason why everyone's seeing all these moonshots in this game. 500-foot home runs all the time. 600-foot home runs I've seen and heard that people are getting six. I don't know if that's true or not that everyone's saying that. I, think, I believe everybody that they're saying that because I've seen, I think, I think I've only seen one 600-foot home run on uh, YouTube at least. But, yeah, it seems like that's going to be the case. Because, yeah, the new ball physics and stuff are making these home runs hit a mi miles and miles away. So, this is when Barry Larkin becomes... Or is that Barry Larkin on base? I think... Wait, I don't even think that is Barry Larkin on base. But either way, the speed is on base. So, that's good. Because, you know, I'm trying to get some speed guys in the lineup. Barry Larkin has that 89 speed. That wasn't Barry Larkin on base. What am I even saying? I think that's Kipnis on base right there. So, yeah, either way. Or was that McCutcheon? Man, I'm, I'm failing already in this in this commentary. I think that was McCutcheon on base. Barry Larkin's at the top of the lineup, which is not even close to where a bench would be batting. So either way, as I get back on track and stop folding in this commentary, uh, I think I think Rendon, yeah, Rendon just came up with that base hit. And say what you want. Say whatever you want about Rendon, man. I know everyone's probably sick and tired of seeing Rendon in the lineup. This guy has been kind of going off the past couple of games. Like, I know it's, you know, it's somebody needs to be, yeah, somebody else needs to be picked up. I know that for a fact. But Rendon has been playing very, very good lately, at the plate at least. I mean, in the field, that's a whole other conversation. But at the plate, 
he's been getting the job done. I mean, a couple games ago, he was 4 for 4. I think last game, he had a couple hits, too. And then this game, too, he also did some damage in this game, too. So just wait and see. Rendon. Every, everyone might th might change their mind about Rendon. Actually, probably not because they're still probably sick and tired of seeing Rendon in the lineup. But either way, somebody will be picked up at some point in time. Like I said, hopefully it'll be uh, Edgar Martinez or somebody over there at third base. Maybe Josh Donaldson, somebody in the future. Not really sure when. I'm, I'm, I don't know, I'm just waiting for the servers to be working consistently, even though ranked seasons for myself has worked for the majority, major, majority, the majority of the time. The majority of the time, ranked seasons has been working for myself. So I guess I can't really complain about that, but I know for a lot of people that's the case. So yeah, hopefully you know that'll, that'll all be resolved soon. Whenever you know a card in this game is a glitch, when you throw something on the inside part of the plate, it's a late swing. Opposite field home run. Curtis Granderson, the flashback Granderson, might be one of the best cards against righties in this game at this moment from what I'm seeing. I mean, everyone I've played with the flashback Granderson and just what I've been doing with Granderson so far, it's been ridiculous a little bit. I mean, that was an opposite field shot right there on a, on a yeah, I think it was on the inside part of the play. I think it may have been a sinker or something. Late swing sends a solo shot to left field. So, yeah, but Granderson is a beast in this game, the flashback Granderson. And I know a lot of people have been asking me how you get him. Apparently, a lot of people uh, don't really know how to get him. You get him You get him in Conquest for doing all the... I think you have to capture all the... I did, I did, I did this like a couple weeks ago, but I'm pretty sure you have to take over all the American League strongholds. And then once you do that, you have to do a couple missions for... Yeah, yeah you take over every single American League stronghold, and then you have to do all the missions for, for the American League. And then you get the flashback Granderson, so that's how you get him. Because I feel like out of every single player, people have been asking me how you get him the most. You get Justin Upton. Uh, a lot of people have been asking me how you get Justin Upton too. You get him for finishing the Diamondbacks collection. Forget it. I think everyone knew how you got Barry Larkin. You get him for the epic. Yeah, everyone obviously knew how you get Barry Larkin. You get him for the team epic missions. But yeah, Justin Upton is the Diamondbacks collection. And Granderson is for all the American League missions after you take over the Strongholds and Conquests. I think that's... Those are really the only two players that people have been asking me how to get. I'm pretty sure everyone else knows how to uh, get all the diamonds and stuff on my squad by now. Most of them are from the Team Epics. I think, yeah, because Barry Larkin, uh, Luis Gonzalez is the Diamondbacks uh, Epic Mission, obviously. And just, yeah, some people probably don't know some of the players, which is understandable if you don't, uh, if you haven't looked at the Epic Missions and stuff, or if you just, obviously, if you don't fill out collections and stuff, you probably have no idea how to get these players. But yeah, Justin Upton is the Diamondbacks uh, Collection Reward, and... Who was the who was the Reds? I'm trying to remember. I forget. Who was the Reds? I'm, I I know I'm I'm yeah I'm making a I forget. I, I, who it was Bench? What am I? What am I even saying? It was Bench. Yeah, Johnny Bench was the Reds collection reward. I just totally forgot his Bench. I don't even know why I forgot that because I was thinking about going on in this video about how Johnny Bench is pretty much the next Jonathan Lucroy. This guy is letting everything through the wickets. Everything. Every single thing is going through the wickets for Johnny Bench. That is not even a joke. Lucroy, it was, to be honest, Lucroy was doing a better job behind the plate. Because when Lucroy, he would at least kind of block it. It would bounce a million feet away from him, but still, at least he would get a piece of it. Johnny Bench isn't even blocking anything, not even getting a piece of the ball. I mean, at the plate, right there, he's getting a base hit. So he has been doing it at the plate a little bit, but behind the dish, man, this guy is a liability. Like, after this game, I was saying, someone else needs to be picked up. I know I just picked him up, too, but still, you just, what is it? So the catchers in this game, from, from my understanding so far, is it just the catchers in this game with 80 blocking or above are the ones who can't block anything? Because Giovanni Soto, I've been using Gary Sanchez and BR. Those guys don't even have close to the blocking that uh, that that this Johnny Bench has. I know that for or I don't I don't know actually. I know that uh, I know that Giovanni Soto has 76 blocking or something like that. So that's not even I guess that is kind of close, but not as good as Johnny Bench. Johnny Bench has 82, 83, 84 around there somewhere. But still, man, it seems like every catcher with above 80 blocking in this game are the catchers who can't block anything. So, yeah, man, at least Johnny Bench has been swinging a hot bat. I mean, if he wasn't, he would have already been on the bench and Soto would have already been back in the lineup. But, yeah, man, Jorge Posada is 
uh, some other is another guy I've been uh, trying to pick up too. I was saying that the Yankees collection is a, a collection I'm going to try and fill out soon. Between the Yankees, Blue Jays, and Mariners, those are probably the next three uh, collections I am looking into doing. Has anyone else picked up Jorge Posada in uh, ranked seasons? And if so, is he doing good behind the plate? As in, is he blocking shit? Because I want somebody who can get it done at the plate and behind the plate. Because, yeah, even Luke Roy wasn't doing it all. He wasn't doing it. He wasn't doing it at the plate and behind the plate, but Bench has been swinging a, a half-decent bat at least. But I've seen Jorge Posada gameplay a little bit in BR. I haven't really heard if he's, you know, good at blocking stuff. So if anyone has uh, Jorge Posada in ranked seasons, it would be nice to know that because, yeah, if he does apparently do very well behind the plate, then that would just motivate me more to get Jorge Posada. But Luis Gonzalez was able to get a double right there on the ground rule double. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to cash him in. So this guy still has the one nothing lead. Uh, I think it's around the middle innings in this game so far, so I, so I still have time. It's the top of the seventh right now, so it is getting late. It is getting late in this game. I mean, this guy was able to get somebody on third base, but he wasn't able to cash another run in, so wasn't able to get the insurance. That is good for myself. Herrera was able to shut the door. Rendon is leading off this. Wait, there's two down. There's two down in this inning. Rendon is looking to get a two-out rally going, which has been the storyline for the squad, man. Two-out rallies have been one of the most common scenarios that's happened for the squad so far in BR and in ranked seasons. Man! How are you going to hang a curveball like that and me not hit it to the moon? So right there, this guy's getting away with one. And then, oh man, Karos. Karos could have hit that. It still wouldn't have landed. It would have landed. It would have landed past McCovey Cove in San Francisco 100%. But two pitches later, he is delivering. Run. Run your ass home, Rendon. Move your tail. He's making it. He gets it in to home right there. We are tying the game up. So it is now 1-1 going into the 8th. So, yeah, man, this guy was able to get a base hit. I think there was at least one down at this point in time. So he's able to get another double right there. So the go-ahead run is on second base. This was a very good game up until this point. This is what I like to see, man. No BS. No bullshit was happening. It wasn't, you know, one team was hitting a bunch of home runs and just getting crazy rallies going. This was just a good game all around. It's tied. This guy's able to get two guys in scoring position. So Glenn Perkins is in. I had the pen uh, ready. There was two guys warming up in the pen, two guys in scoring position. I'm able to avoid any damage done. Perkins comes in, does his job in the eighth inning. So fast forward to the ninth. Nothing really happened in the bottom of the eighth, top of the ninth. So fast forward to the bottom of the ninth. A walk-off can win it. And if it's going to be anybody, it would be Kipnis. He's leading the squad in home runs, but right there, he's going down, swinging. So Johnny Bench, can he do something? Unfortunately not. Trying to sell into the opposite field, but that isn't even making it to the warning track right there. So now we are going in the extra innings. I don't think I've played a ranked seasons game where it went in the extra so far. So this is going to get very interesting. Now in the top of the 10th inning, he's able to get a single right there with Orlando Cepeda. So he's got somebody on base. All this guy needs to do is just find Triple's alley, and that will cash in that run 100%. That was ugly. Man, that was ugly. That was the biggest gift I've ever seen. This guy apparently thought this was going to land because he took off. Didn't think that was going to be caught for sure, and then he's getting doubled off trying to get back to first base. So I'm able to avoid any damage done in that inning as well. So now we're going to the 11th. Oh, wait, this is the 10th. Rendon is up. So Rendon, like this is what I'm saying, man. Rendon is getting it done. Seriously, he is getting it done. That's a double right there. Lorenzo Kane is up over four after that. But I'm tagging up with Rendon or at least trying to. Reggie Jackson with the hoax. What? Reggie Jackson with the gun from right field gets Rendon trying to get all get to third base so wasn't able to cash in so I don't know where that came from because I don't think Reggie Jackson has that good of an arm on that 94 overall card does he I was surprised that happened but in the top of the 11th this guy wasn't able to get anything going so bottom of the 11th is is around it is here it's not just around it is here Barry Larkin gets the squad started, gets gets it started off. That's all that needs to be said. Barry Larkin gets the squad going. Lead off single right there. So got that speed on base. You know 
100% I am taking off. I don't care if he goes to the pitch out, the slide step. He is taking off Barry Larkin. Makes it into second base. Screw the slide step. I'm making it. Luis Gonzalez can play the hero. He can be the hero in the debut game. So what can Luis Gonzalez do? Lefty in. Gonzalez connects. It's finding the gap. Barry Larkin scores easily. Gonzalez plays the hero in the debut game. Luis Gonzalez comes through. What a game that was. That was, that was a very good game. That's all I could say. That was a very good game. Luis Gonzalez is clutch. Two for five in the debut game. How aren't you going to give player of the game to Gonzalez right there, man? How aren't you going to do it? How can you, I don't know, Rendon did go three for four again. So Rendon is stealing player of the game away from people who deserve it. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed, leave a thumbs up. I'm going to be posting another video within the hour. So definitely be on the lookout for that.